Hi, I'm Herb Gross, and I'd like to welcome you to what I hope is going to be a very, very exciting and informative voyage into the world of algebra. I'm hoping that some of you are already old timers in this style of, of instruction and that you've completed gateways to mathematics, a prerequisite arithmetic course, and I'm assuming that some of you are newcomers uh, coming on board having already learned your arithmetic and starting off in the field of algebra. A long time ago, I learned a slogan that said, you only have one chance to make a first impression. So rather than get into subject matter in, in this opening session, I'd like to take the time to have me get to know you and possibly for you to get to know me. I don't know exactly what the various reasons are that everybody will be taking this course, but the one thing we will assume is that since on Star Trek alone, time is refundable, and reversible in every place it isn't. I'm assuming that anybody who's taking this course wants to at least make sure that for the time they're putting into it, they're getting something out of it that's worthwhile. And it's my job to make sure that that happens. It's my job to make this course as pleasant for you, as meaningful for you, and to bring up something which I'll probably mention more than once during this course about something I learned from one of my sons who was an excellent football player. And he went double sessions every August for eight years, meaning before football season began, they would practice twice a day in August in this blistering heat. But whenever I asked them to mow the lawn, it was always too hot. And it took me a long time to understand this, that he was really telling the truth, that it was too hot to mow the lawn, but it wasn't too hot to play football. And the reason that it wasn't too hot to play football was he enjoyed playing football. He didn't enjoy mowing the lawn. And the lesson I learned from that is that the only difference between work and play is not the degree of difficulty, but the degree of enjoyment. If you're enjoying something, you won't mind if you're working hard. And if you feel that you're growing from something, you won't mind paying the price for that. And so it's my job to give you the feeling that you're going to grow and going to learn. Now, one of the first reasons that people have trouble with mathematics has nothing to do with their mathematical ability. The real reason that many people have trouble with mathematics is that mathematics is a language unto its own. And what happens in the language is there is a difference between the word and what that word means. I mean, I have a favorite riddle I love to give people. It's, it's not that exciting, but you might enjoy it. And we'll take a minute to let you look at this thing. It says, make one word out of new door. Make one word out of new door. Okay? Rearrange the letters in new door to make one word. Well, maybe some of you have figured it out already, and those of you who haven't figured it out will get angry with me if I take much more time to show you, because the answer is not what you think it's going to be. Let's take a look and see what the answer is. The answer is one word. See the N, the E, the W, the D, an O, an O, and an R. Rather interesting thing. One word is actually two words. You see the difference? The concept of one word takes two words to express. Let me see if I can give you a, a, a deeper example of that. Let's suppose that there's a black cat in the corner of the room here. And I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you two true-false questions. The first true-false question is, true or false, the cat is black. The second true-false question is, true or false, el gato es negro. Now, you're going to be honest with me, okay? So for this first question, I say to you, true or false, the cat is black, you put down true. Now I say to you, true or false, el gato es negro. Well, this happens to be Spanish for the cat is black. Suppose you don't know any Spanish. You can't say true. By the way, you can't say false either, because to, to call something false means you first have to understand it. If you don't understand it, it's neither true nor false. The only answer you can give over here is, I don't know. Now, is there another reason why you might have said, I don't know? See, one reason would be you didn't understand uh, Spanish, OK? Why else might you say, I don't know? Well, you could have been colorblind. Maybe you couldn't recognize that the cat was black. See, suppose you understood Spanish, but you couldn't tell the color of the cat. What would you say then? I don't know. We say it in Spanish, perhaps, but you say I don't know. Now, let me show you something. 
The thing that's interesting is, if you were colorblind, colorblindness is bilingual. If you're colorblind in Spanish, you're also colorblind in English. So if you know that it's true that the cat is black, but you don't know that El Gato es Negro, you don't have a vision problem. What you have is, is a language problem. And look how this happens in math. Here's two problems. One says, at $2.54 per pound, how much does 10 pounds of ground beef cost? The second problem says, if there are 2.54 centimeters per inch, how many centimeters are there in 10 inches? I bet you every person here, as soon as I gave you this problem, knew that the answer was $25.40. You said, I'm buying 10 pounds, it's 254 a pound, I'll just multiply the 254 by 10, that means move the decimal point one place to the right, the answer is $25.40. Now I give a person the second problem, what do you think many people say when they see this problem the first time? They say, I don't know the metric system. I say, my goodness, who taught you the ground beef system? When I said the ground beef was $2.54 a pound, nobody says, hey, I don't know the ground beef system. You just took that as a given. See, what scares people is what? The word centimeters. They say, I don't know the metric system. The important point was what? If there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch, in 10 inches, they're going to be what? 10 times 2.54 centimeters. In other words, if you can do the first problem here correctly, but you can't do the second problem, you don't have a math problem, you have a language problem or a psychological block. Now, for those of you who've been with me in Gateways to Mathematics, you recognize these examples as the same ones I used there. In algebra, we're going to be dealing with a reverse version of arithmetic. See, in mathematics, we study relationships between terms. And sometimes, to abbreviate what the relationship is, we use something called a formula. For example, a typical problem in the language of algebra might say, if C is equal to 5 ninths, parentheses, F minus 32, solve for C when F equals 68. Now, if you're afraid of symbolism like this, this becomes kind of a scary problem, doesn't it? But suppose I said to you, pick a number, subtract 32, divide by 9, multiply by 5, and then say to you, what answer will you get using this recipe if you picked 68 to start with? Does anybody have any trouble saying 68, I subtract 32, gives me 36, I divide by 9, gives me 4, I multiply by 5, gives me 20? That was pretty easy. This says the same thing in the language of algebra. We're going to be talking about this as the course goes on. And by the way, even though you don't have to know this, what you really did when you carried out this recipe is you actually determined the rather important fact that when it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit, it's 20 degrees Celsius. Now, I just mentioned that to you to show you what algebra is going to be concerned with. And what I want you to see is what? Let's start gradually so you don't become confused by the language. And what that does for me is it does one very important thing now that this delivery system is going to do for you. This delivery system, in case you haven't noticed, is on videotape. What does that mean? It means if I say something in a language that you don't understand, unlike in a regular classroom, you don't have to say, oh, I've got to go through all of this. When class is over, I'll come back to this. <clears throat> as soon as you don't understand something, stop the tape. Think about what was said. Rewind the tape. Play it again. And don't go on until you understand it. And if I haven't done my job well, and you can't understand it even if you watch it five times or six times or seven times, go to a friend, go to a teacher, go to a tutor, and ask somebody. But the important point is there is absolutely no need for you to be moving on in this course until you've mastered whatever it is that I'm talking about. You see, many, many times, not just for language reasons, but many, many times, one of the reasons that students have difficulty in the course has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that the pace at which they're able to absorb the material is slower than the pace dictated by the lockstep of the classroom. So in this course, whether you're taking it directly with me or whether you're using this as a supplement to a course that you're already taking, there is never any need to worry about being behind. This is my, as, this, as we're speaking right now, 
I don't know when you'll be seeing this, but as we're speaking right now, I have completed 40 years of teaching experience. Not one year of experience 40 times, but 40 years of teaching experience. I've taught at many, many levels, at many, many prestigious levels, and also at many, many non-prestigious levels. I have developed video courses used all over the world by the MIT Center for Advanced Engineering Study. I've also produced a basic arithmetic course, those of you, some of you may have already seen it, called Gateways to Mathematics, that's used, for example, on death row in Central Prison in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's the wide range of extremes that we work through. I've had that experience. And what that means is, in a certain manner of speaking, I've been to the top of the mountain, mathematically speaking. I know what concepts are important in mathematics. I know what you're going to need later on. It means that if I can teach with relevancy, I can take the concepts that you have to know and describe them in terms that will make them easier for you to learn. So let me give you some examples from our, our, our gateways to mathematics, our, our previous course. For example, don't a lot of students have trouble distinguishing between a million and a billion because they're both large numbers? Let me just show you a, a simple thing that we can do. See? A million seconds, a million seconds versus a billion seconds. A million seconds is roughly speaking 12 days. A billion seconds is 31, and this is not a misprint, 31 years. A million is to a billion as 12 days is to 31 years. This may not be a very practical result, but once you hear it, are you ever going to forget it? Are you ever going to confuse the order of magnitude difference between million and billion again? I don't think so. That's the kind of thing that we're going to be doing. Some of you may remember we did that when we talked about fractions. I've seen young children, when you ask them which is more, two-thirds or seven-fifteenths, always will pick seven-fifteenths. Why? Because the seven is bigger than the two, and the fifteen is bigger than the three. Now, all two-thirds means is that you're taking two out of every three. It, in other words, if that little kid has ever shared candy with a younger brother, when he said, two for me, one for you, was he taking two-thirds, even if he didn't understand? You see what I'm saying? Now, what does seven-fifteenths mean? Seven-fifteenths means you take seven out of every fifteen. Well, if I take seven, that's going to leave eight. Now, how smart and how intuitive do you have to be to recognize that seven for me, eight for you, is a worse deal for me than two for me, one for you? You see, it's obvious just by looking here that I'm keeping more than what I'm giving away. Here, I'm keeping what? less than I'm giving away. So if a person understands this, but gets this wrong, what is it obviously an example of? That the person didn't see the relevancy of the concept. So one of the things that we're going to be doing in this course is stressing relevancy. And Ashley Montague, the famous sociologist, always defines being young as that thing about young kids who get excited about things. They're inquisitive. And somehow as we get older, we let that get knocked out of us. And Ashley Montague talks about the quest for youth. Not a magic elixir that makes you younger, but this idea of finding things exciting. The idea of finding that when you're learning, great things are happening in your mind. You see, you're young as long as your mind keeps working. And you'll find that my hallmark on all of these lectures, give or take the wording, is always going to be what? Work hard, that's important, but have fun because you'll be enjoying it, and stay young because your mind will be active and you'll have the excitement of learning.